We've heard from uh, the scientists and from uh, Andrew Robertson on the, econ- the economics of aviation. Um, I'd like to bring you back to the protest that happened uh, in early October at Manchester Airport. Why were we there? Well, as we've already heard, uh, aviation is r- responsible for climate change. I have here a quote from Gillian Merrin, who's the aviation minister, or was the aviation minister. Um, and she says, uh, in 2005, aviation accounted for 13% of the total UK climate change damage. That is an understatement because it is based on departing flights only. If the calculation is based on return flights by UK citizens in 2007, the figure would be nearer 20%. Now, what Kevin was talking about earlier was carbon dioxide emissions only. Is that, is that correct? <coughs> um, when he said that carbon dioxide is, uh, well, aviation is responsible for 7% of the UK's carbon dioxide emissions because that doesn't include the radiative force forcing and the uplift factor of aviation or flying planes at that level um, as well as uh, the other gases. That's why the UK's contribution to climate change is 13% because it includes those radiative forces. I just see these, these growth plans by all UK airports and Manchester as well as, as grossly irresponsible. We want to double passenger numbers, more than double, by 2030. Um, and I just wonder how this squares with our commitment to tackle climate change. At the moment, 30, nearly 30% 30 of, of these flights from Manchester are domestic. And the reason domestic flights were uh, targeted in our original demonstration was because these are by and large the most easily replaceable flights. They're the ones that are the most unnecessary and the ones that we need to cut down on first. Environmentalists are often charged with uh, wanting to stop low-income family holidays and we're uh, against working class people uh, going abroad. This, this isn't even true. Um, Firstly, only 5% of the world's population actually fly, according to John Whiteley, and that's globally. The average salary of passengers at Stanford, Stanford's supposed to be a budget airport, is £47,000. This isn't the lower, lower income family holiday anymore. This is, this is the middle and upper classes binge flying, you know, three or four times a year to, to their second homes in, in Spain, however. So, I mean, that charge that we're, we're trying to stop low income families going on holidays is simply not fair. Moving on. Manchester Airport recently responded to our demonstration that they want to become carbon neutral. Now, on the surface of it, this is a really laudable aspiration, but it doesn't include the emissions from the flight. (laughs) 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 I mean, I I read in the MEM today that they plan to to, to change uh, some light bulbs at the the airport. No, I mean, I welcome any institution that wants to go carbon neutral, but we didn't blockade the, the, the departure lounge because there weren't enough en- energy efficient light bulbs in the building. <laughs> we're, we're called plane stupid, not airport stupid. Good for the economy, the classic uh, stronghold argument, supposedly, of the aviation industry. Not true, I'm afraid. Uh, we've already heard these stats. Uh, there's no tax on aviation fuel, that's already costing the public purse 10 billion a year. There's a tourism deficit of 17 billion a year as well. That's, that's UK tourists flying out and spending more abroad than uh, tourists flying in and spending in Britain. The Stone Report came out in November 2006 and it unequivocally told us that we've got to act. It, it told economists in their own terms that it's going to cost us 20 times more GDP to deal with the effects of climate change once it's happened than to stop it happening in the first place. <laughs> Moving on away from the economic argument, uh, how can we have unlimited economic growth in a world of finite resources. Um, the, the goods we've produced so far at this rate have only been possible because of complete disregard for our environment. Um, and we need to start measuring the success of our country through other means, not just GDP. And if that sounds radical, um, well then these were the policy recommendations made uh, to that well-known bastion of radical uh, politics, the Conservative Party of Great Britain, <laughs> made uh, in a report for the Quality of Life Commission. So, um, <clears throat> moving on, China and India. People often say, hey, wait, hey, why should we stop flying? What about China and India? They're, look at them. It's like, well, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, sure. But, <laughs> um, we need to, what it says, we need to get our own house in order before we go to the international negotiation table and start saying, hey, you, uh, you've just got up and come, uh, you know, just got off the ground, we've had 200 years of fossil fuel development. Actually, no, you can't, um, and we are building more airports, but never mind that. We need to get our own house in order first.